In Pennsylvania, Senate candidates Democrat John Fetterman and Republican Mehmet Oz faced off Tuesday night in their first and only debate ahead of the November 8th election to fill the seat held by Republican Senator Pat Toomey, who's retiring at the end of the term. The Pennsylvania race will likely help decide which party controls the Senate. Fetterman's the lieutenant governor of Pennsylvania, who's running as a progressive populist. Oz is a well-known television doctor who's worth at least 700 $76 million. He's been endorsed by Donald Trump. Much of the race has been focused on Fetterman's health. Just days before the Democratic primary in May, Fetterman suffered a stroke, forcing him to cancel public appearances for months. He still suffers from auditory processing issues. On Tuesday night, a closed captioning system was set up so Fetterman could read the questions and his opponent's responses. During his opening statement, Fetterman discussed his stroke. And let's also talk about the elephant in the room. I had a stroke. He's never let me forget that. And I might miss some words during this debate mush two words together, but it knocked me down, but I'm going to keep coming back up. And this campaign is all about, to me, is about fighting for everyone in Pennsylvania that ever got knocked down, that needs to get back up, and fighting for all forgotten communities all across Pennsylvania. One of the most heated portions of the debate between John Fetterman and Mehmet Oz centered on the issue of reproductive rights. This is Dr. Oz talking about his support for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. There should not be involvement from the federal government in how states decide their abortion decisions. As a physician, I've been in the room when there's some difficult t conversations happening. I don't want the federal government involved with that at all. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders, letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. Meanwhile, John Fetterman reiterated his support for reproductive rights. What I support, I support on Roe v. Wade. That was the law of the land for 50 years. He celebrated when it fell down, and I would fight to reestablish on Roe v. Wade. That's what I run on. That's what I believe. And I've always believed that the choice belongs women and their doctors. And he believes that the choice should be with him or Republican legislators all across this nation. For more, we're joined in Philadelphia by Will Bunch, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, national columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Will, welcome back to Democracy Now! So, let's start off the significance of this race. I mean, it's one of the most watched races in the country right now. Could to determine the balance of the U.S. Senate? And then talk about this debate last night. Yes, well, it absolutely could. I mean, if you look at the polls, uh, right now, if, if if all the races went the way the polls are predicting, we'd be at or close to another 50-50 Senate. So so one race could really decide whether it's 50-50 or 51-49. Either way, it could decide, you know, who the next Senate majority leader is going to be, whether it's going to be Mitch McConnell or, or Chuck Schumer. So um, uh, this race is absolutely important. The polls have shown it's been tightening. That Fetterman's led in most of the polls, but Oz is polled to within a virtual tie at this point. So last night was truly, you know, in terms of Senate races, and I, I've been covering politics for 40 years, just one of the most make or break nights I've, I've seen in my lifetime of covering politics. And talk about the what happened last night in the beginning mm -hmm. when John Fetterman uh, addressed the issue of his stroke, very unusual as he read closed captioning so he could process the questions and mimic uh, Oz's responses. Yes, I mean, so what what Fetterman and his team did was, you know, they they tried to prepare the audience for the fact that he was going to struggle verbally on some of the answers. You know, they prepared going into it. Uh, uh, I think he played his clip at the beginning, uh, you know, where he said he might mush words together, he, he might struggle with some of the answers. Um, that having said, I mean, uh, you know, I think you know, no matter where you come down politically, uh, it was a very hard night for John Fetterman in, in terms of where he was at with his stroke recovery and, and trying to deal with a format like this. You know, a, a lot of people pointed out the format of the debate last night, which was uh, really built around very short answers and, and meant to have a kind of a rapid fire give and take, uh, was probably the worst possible format for him. I mean, he he struggled with it. He, he clearly struggled with some of his answers. And, you know, uh, again, it, it's really kind of 
falls on the electorate to some point of, of how do you view that? I mean, most most doctors say, uh, you know, Fetterman has shown that he is recovering from this stroke. Uh, he's at a stage of his recovery where he's not 100 percent recovered, uh, but it, but it's mainly, you know, auditory processing issues. And the question is, you know, whether as far as that part of it is concerned, whether voters are going to, uh, you know, look at uh, his heart problem, or or what's in Fetterman's heart, right? You know what his positions are on the issues, and 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 what he would do as a senator in terms of how he'd vote on things like reproductive rights or the minimum wage. Now, so, reproductive um, rights is a really interesting issue. We just played those clips, but for Dr. Mehmet Oz to say he doesn't want the feds involved with this decision, as if he was saying it should be a woman's personal decision, he did say it should be a decision between a woman, her doctor, <laughs> and local political leaders. Yeah, I mean, what was fascinating was, you know, for all for all the focus on on Fetterman's performance, absolutely the worst gaffe of the night was was from Mehmet Oz. You know, the fact that uh, the fact that line where he said, you know, an abortion is decision between a woman, her doctor, and local elected officials. I mean, I mean, Pennsylvanians are going to see that that moment on a loop nonstop between now and November eighth because, uh, you know, that is going to is just going to be a highly unpopular. Uh, uh, position, you know, the, the vast majority of voters in Pennsylvania, as in the rest of the country, do not want anyone else involved in that in that very private decision about reproductive rights. Doctors' so, offices so that, that are going to have to get bigger. Doctors' offices are going to have to get bigger <laughs> in order to fit the doctor, the uh, person who is pregnant, and the local elected officials all into that little office. As oh they my gosh! Yeah, the, the reaction. It, yeah, I mean, I mean, my Twitter feed was flooded with tweets from uh, from local elected officials saying, "Look, I'm I'm the last person you want to hear from on this, you know, and uh, you definitely do not want me involved." And, and what and, about uh, uh, yeah. Will? What about fracking? Um, uh, Mehmet Oz says that uh, John Fetterman has switched his position on fracking. Used to be against it. Now he says he's for it. I mean, to me, to, to be honest, the, the whole fracking thing was was the most disappointing part of the debate for a couple, because I think it's a very important issue. Uh, you know, I mean, basically, both both candidates, in terms of what they said last night, gave, uh, you know, a full on endorsement of fracking. Uh, and, and there was basically no mention of climate change at all in the in the debate from either from either the moderators, which was bad, or from either candidate. Um, uh, you know, uh, what I, I thought the second worst moment of the debate, aside from uh, Oz's abortion gaffe, was an answer he gave on the minimum wage, where he basically said, he would do nothing legislatively to raise the minimum wage, and and this is a huge issue in Pennsylvania because the state minimum wage here is only seven uh, is only seven twenty five, just like the national, and so we really depend on Washington to bail us out on that. And he said he wouldn't do anything, but he also said the cure is just more fracking, which will create these magical high paying jobs, which hasn't been the case since since the two thousands, and. Um, uh, uh, you know, and, and there was no mention of climate change throughout the debate. Um, you know, I I, I, I wish I, to me to me, I think the most disappointment disappointing moment on substance for Fetterman was the fact that he he didn't give a more nuanced answer on fracking, that he, he, he had a chance to address climate change and at least at least say that he supports, you know, more environmental regulation on fracking, which he does. Um, uh, you know, I, the, the truth is the majority of Pennsylvanians uh, oppose fracking, which is I think, poorly understood by most political experts. So that was a bit of a disappointment, that um, moment. I want to go to the part of the debate last night in Pennsylvania, where John Fetterman and Mehmet Oz sparred over President Biden's plan to offer student debt relief to millions of borrowers. This is Dr. Oz. John Fetterman's approach, however, is not to deal with the unnecessarily high cost, but just to pay it. So if you want to pay students who didn't pay their loans back, basically what John Fetterman and Joe Biden are, 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 are arguing for is for plumbers who didn't go to college and couldn't, for a bunch of reasons, afford it, to pay the bills of lawyers who went to graduate school and haven't paid their debt back. I don't think that's right for the American people. Let me just ask specifically, uh, with the plan to um, ease student loan debt, the debt forgiveness of $10,000, $20,000 for Pell Grant recipients, do you support that position? I, I, I do absolutely support that, I believe. Like I said, uh, it's about helping y young learners, you know, be able to get a better start 
you know, getting off uh, in the, the start of their life. And I, I do believe that. And I believe a, ma a majority of Americans support that as well, too. That last answer, John Fetterman. Well, Will Bunch, you've written a whole book on this subject after the ivory tower falls, how college broke the American dream and blew up our politics and how to fix it. You look at how Americans came to owe $1.7 billion in student loans. Um, put what they're saying in context. Um, uh, yeah, well, I mean, the bottom line is this. Uh, uh, I mean, both of them could have and should have given a few more specifics. But, uh, you know, Fetterman supports student debt relief and, and, and Mehmet Oz opposes student debt relief. I mean, again, uh, uh, if you want to focus on the issues, I mean, I think that's the important takeaway for voters. You know, um, uh, Oz's answer was was not good. I mean, you know, he gave kind of the standard Republican trope about uh, or, or, or not trope. I mean, I mean, uh, College administrators are somewhat overpaid, but even addressing that problem is only only a drop in the bucket when you're talking about the uh, about the debt crisis, which is 1.7 trillion dollars, which is just an astronomical figure. Um, he also he also uh, said a line which I thought should have gotten more attention, which is he thought his solution to making college more affordable was to have more electronic classes, which. Uh, you know, if you if you remember the height of the COVID era, that was the biggest complaint from students and, and administrators was, you know, that the steriliness of, of, of trying to do college online. And, and yet Oz was proposing this as an answer for college as is, is, is opposed to, you know, I I embracing liberal education and what that can do for our young people. So, so uh, you know, I, I thought Oz's answer was terrible. I mean, I would I would have liked to have seen more specifics again from Fetterman, but I think uh, you know, Fetterman's again, his his heart is in the right direction in, in that he wants student debt relief uh, and he wants to make college affordable you, for more people. You have this latest news this week. The Republican-led states, a number of them, are attempting to stop a Biden from implementing his pan, plan of debt relief for some uh, people. Um, you write in your book about the college problem, as you put it, or the college-non-college -college divide. Um, how do you see the college divide impacting the midterms and also the presidential election in 2024? I, I think it could have a big impact on the midterms. I, you know, I Explain mean, I think, what you mean. I think the, yeah, well, I, yeah, I think no. I think the hope is that young voters are paying attention to this and that they understand that one party is is trying to block student debt relief, as you said. I mean, the Republicans not only think it's a bad idea, but now you have a number of Republican officials going into court and and trying to block block this plan that would be ten or even twenty thousand dollars of debt relief for millions of of you know, young and middle-aged people, um, uh, you know, and, and President Biden and the Democrat, you know, is the one who uh, finally took some action for the first time in decades, really, for the first time since the Reagan era, to, to make higher education a public good, to, to admit that we all have a responsibility for making higher education affordable and an option for our young people. So, so I think, I think, Voters should see a contrast, you know, whether the Democrats can get that message out and energize young voters who historically don't turn out in high rates in the midterms to, to, to make them see that contrast and to get them to vote. You know, um, you know, the Republicans are trying to play on uh, uh, working class resentment. You know, they're saying that, you know, plumbers and taxi drivers and people without bachelor's degrees. And, re and remember, 63 percent of Americans do not have a bachelor's degree. And they, they're trying to play on class resentments. Uh, about debt relief uh, to, to help them at the polls, but I, I think I think there's a real m misunderstanding of who who gets student loans. I mean, I mean, frankly, a lot of people who live in these red districts uh, either are struggling with student loans or you know would like to have access to college that they're being denied right now. So I think I think on the Republican side, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of young people, uh, you know, the college situation and and who's getting these loans.